Spain, following their reign as one of the largest empires since the birth of civilization, Spain has emerged as a country with a cultural heritage so rich that it finds itself extending to different parts of the world. But don't be fooled by their pristine image. They may appear unblemished on the outside, but once you hear about what's really going on in Spain, your perception of them might change faster than a bull seeing red. In austerity struck Spain, street protesters are screaming for the government to resign over the latest corruption scandal. Gertel, although a German word, is a real head turner in Spain thanks to its association to one of the country's biggest corruption scandals ever. Francisco Correa Sanchez is an ambitious businessman known for his flamboyance and unusually strong charisma. Growing up in Morocco, his family had more than enough to be able to live comfortably, at least until political tension forced them to head for Madrid. They were left with almost zero assets. From then on, Correa had nothing else but the desire for success on his mind. He slowly worked his way up first as a bellboy, then a travel agent. After building himself to a point where he had his own travel and events companies, he organized trips for high-ranking members of the People's Party, a conservative and Christian Democratic Party, in hopes of earning their favor. Fortunately for him, his plan worked. His efforts made him a welcomed ally and afforded him connections with the political high society. Correa was incredibly generous when it came to giving gifts to his potential business partners. He would pay for dinners, sponsor vacations, buy you expensive cars, you name it. If he sensed that there was a chance to make money from you, he will make sure you were very well taken care of. This was his preferred method of keeping his connections in line. Correa finally had power and he wanted more. He saw that there was a lot of money to be had in construction and public-private contracts, so he leveraged his newfound status to get his foot in the door. The People's Party, popularly known in Spain as PP, had a firm grasp on the wealthier outskirts of Madrid. Correa engaged in talks with local officials to inflate the prices of certain contracts and award them to companies under his control. This included projects related to street cleaning, building works, public information campaigns, and so on. Once the contracts have been handed to Korea's companies, all individuals involved would pocket the excess budget, and the taxpayers are left to pay for their sins. They were able to get away with this from 1999 to 2005, amassing a total of about 120 million euros off public funds alone. In 2006, Jose Luis Peñas, a town councillor under the PP, started recording his interactions with Korea. Peñas found out about the corruption happening within his political party and, having strong convictions against it, decided to take action. Even if it meant risking his life, he gathered evidence for a good year before cooperating with the authorities. In 2007, another whistleblower by the name of Ana Garrido Ramos fed information to the police about shady business happening in Madrid. They launched an investigation immediately, and by 2009, the public knew about Gertel. Korea was arrested by the authorities during the investigation. The list of charges against him included bribery, money laundering, tax fraud, influence peddling, and documentary falsification. The initial bail was set at 15 million euros, the second highest in Spanish history, but the judge reduced the sum required to 200,000 euros which was quickly paid off. The rest of the investigation took a lot of time because of the number of suspects and delays in receiving information from foreign banks. And finally, by 2016, the case went to trial. The most significant convictions were given to Korea, his right-hand man Pablo Crespo, and former PP treasurer Luis Barcenas. Korea was sentenced to 51 years while Crespo received jail time worth 37 years and 6 months. Barsanis, who had his own corruption scandal for holding 48 million euros worth of illegal cash donations in Swiss banks, received a 33-year sentence and a hefty 44 million euro fine. Overall, 37 individuals were charged, 29 of which were convicted. Korea and his associates may have been served justice, 
But what about the people whose lives had been affected by their greed? But before we continue on, consider subscribing to the channel since you obviously found our video fascinating by making it this long in the video. Now, let's get back to it. The after effects of Gürtel were detrimental to the entire country. Government trust saw record lows during the investigation, going from 58% in 2008 to 18.5% in 2013, at the height of Gürtel's public awareness. Spain found themselves at 40th place in Transparency International's Corruption Perceptions Index of 2013, dropping down 10 places from the year before. A shift in the nation's political landscape also occurred. Far-right political groups also saw more success after previously being dominated by the left. In 2018, the Vox Party became the first far-right group to win seats in Spain since their return to democracy in 1975. The effects of Gertel on Spanish citizens were most apparent in employment. Unemployment rates went from 7.3% in 2007 to a whopping 27% during the first quarter of 2013. Poverty rate was also at an all-time high, going from 19.7% in 2006 to 22.3% in 2015. Children have alarmingly high rates of poverty, coming in at around 31% of their total population at risk. While Gürtel is partly to blame, other factors still come into play. Temporary work contracts are common in Spain, making up almost a quarter of the workforce. And each month, 9 out of 10 hires are on temporary contracts. Employers prefer temporary contracts for one simple reason – to save money. The high cost of social security tax for employers pushes them to find ways to cut corners. So they turn to temporary work contracts. It's much cheaper to hire temporary workers than to have to pay for the luxuries that come with hiring permanent employees, such as severance pay. This method of employment is a deterrent to people who wish to enter the workforce since there is little job security to be had. This could be why migration out of the country saw a rise in popularity in recent years. Should employers choose to continue this practice, unemployment and poverty will only continue growing in number. Spain not only has problems with their people, but with their land as well. Desertification happens when a land capable of hosting plants and animals begins to dry up, eventually losing its ability to sustain life. Unfortunately for Spain, they are faced with this issue right now. The country has been identified as being at risk of desertification, with as much as 35% of the territory already affected. A fifth of the entire land is already on the brink of turning into deserts. But what causes desertification in the first place? This can be triggered by natural causes, including forest fires, erosion, and salinization. However, actions taken by man have also been known to cause this issue. Take the Guadalquivir River, for instance. For so long, farmers have been extracting water from this source in order to irrigate their olive groves and rice fields. The amount of water these farmers take regularly has caused overabstraction in the river, seriously jeopardizing its water level. It is estimated that there are over half a million illegal wells all over Spain. Other reasons include CO2 emissions and urbanization. Some of the consequences of desertification include loss of life and diseases. But perhaps the most devastating to Spain is the vulnerability to food shortages. The drying up of land directly leads to infertile soil, and when there's no fertile soil, crops cannot grow. Southern Spain saw their third worst drought ever back in 2017. 37 out of 150 districts were declared in a state of emergency because of lack of water. According to the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Environment, water reservoirs were at their lowest capacity in decades at only 43%. Plant life suffered from these effects. Spain's cereal industry in particular went through hard times, losing around 60 to 70 percent of crops in Castilla y Leon, their biggest cereal growing region. The production of olives and almonds also felt the negative impact of desertification. Wholesale prices of vegetables such as artichoke, lettuce, and broccoli saw as much as a 50 percent increase at the turn of 2018. 
Since then, Spain has had a rising trend in food insecurity, and it shows no signs of stopping. The worst part about it is that desertification gets closer and closer every day to being permanent. If measures aren't taken soon, Spain will see an average temperature hotter by 2.1 degrees Celsius, with peak temperatures adding about 6.4 degrees Celsius. Spain has proven itself capable of handling adversity throughout its centuries of existence. However, there is still much to be fixed. Government trust still has mountains to climb before being restored. Unemployment needs to be addressed by finding solutions that favor long-term employment. Desertification needs to be combated through irrigation and reforestation before it's too late. If not, the country may find many of its own people abandoning ship in favor of greener pastures.